people knew the witness of the Spirit, the water and the blood, the unity that these three agree to, and that in the church there should be a unity. People bought with the blood of Jesus should be united as a family, John would say in his epistles and his gospel, should be united, as St. Paul would say, in the body of Christ, and yet sin separates us and drives us apart. That's what last week's reading would have said in 1 Corinthians 1, 10 to 17. But this week now we hear about, so where is our identity found? What is the beginning and the end of this solution of being separated from God and one another. I hope you've figured out then the theme of where St. Paul goes. You heard it in the epistle lesson, and maybe you picked on up on it from the hymns so far today. The opening hymn, you catch it? Lift high the cross. The sermon hymn that we just sang, In the Cross. Christ, I glory. You see, St. Paul says that the word of the cross, the speaking of the cross, the identity of those who are in the one who was crucified, he says it is folly to those who are perishing, to those who are, don't have faith, who don't see, who don't hear this promise, this testimony for them. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. In verse 23, he says something that is is, is right at the center of, of hopefully a Christian theology, but certainly a Lutheran theology, but we preach Christ crucified. And then he says it again, but it's a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. And then he ends it in verses 30 and 31. He says, and because of him, because of the love of the Father, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So that as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. All right, I've got to move to sports here. Omaha, Omaha, Omaha. That's an audible. Peyton Manning says that. And if you're going to watch the Super Bowl, maybe he'll say it tonight. Uh, I had to fit that in for Joe Dozine because he's rooting for the Broncos tonight. Uh, But I want to move to the world of sports here for a minute. And because if, if you turn on ESPN, even if you just pull up the webpage, and you look at the top 10 plays, and you watch, um, you watch maybe tonight, maybe it's going to be, I'll be equal opportunity, maybe it's Percy Harvin catch a touchdown for the Seahawks. When he gets into the end zone, what do you think he might do? Maybe he'll spike the ball. Maybe he'll point to his jersey and say, hey, I did it. I did it. You watch the guy who has the big dunk on, on uh, the college basketball game, and maybe he says, look, I did it. I did it. Maybe he even points to the name on the back of the jersey. We live in a society where people love to boast. Look what I did, and there is a place to do it. There are people to see it. Well, I want to stay in the world of sports because something happened the other night. It's not the first time it happened, but now we get immediate reaction with things like Twitter. Uh, There was a basketball game in the NBA between the Oklahoma City Thunder and between the Miami Heat, between uh, Kevin Durant and LeBron James that the NBA likes to market the stars. And and Kevin Durant's team comes out on top 12 games in a row. He scored more than 30 points. It's quite an accomplishment. Doris Burke comes to him after the game and says, you've done this. It's really great. Quite an accomplishment. And uh, so what do you have to say to that? And, And maybe some of you saw it. He just said, Really simple response. He said, thank God. <laughs> That's all I can say. Jesus Christ. That was it. And she, she chuckled. <laughs> so so uh, you didn't have anything to do with it? Nope. It's all him. Refreshing. Refreshing in an age where it's about boasting, look at what I did. And I think Doris Burke, and maybe rightfully so, would expect Kevin Durant to say, well, I'm 6'10", I've worked really hard, I've got great genes, I've worked on my jump shot, I've got good skills, and nope. I just say, thank God. It's all him. Jesus Christ. And so there, there was an immediate response to this. Why did Doris Burke chuckle at him? Was she making fun of him for being a Christian? Uh, was she just thrown off by his response? And then, and now you can read the comments, and you could go to Facebook or wherever else. You could look on the time.com blog that I saw it on. Then I started to see, as soon as uh, someone brings up Jesus, now we start getting division. 
And suddenly the comments were saying, you know, Jesus, that's fine, he was a great teacher, but why do you have to bring religion into this? What relevance did that have to the game? I mean, these people who are following this religion, and all it does is, is hurt people and separate people. Why did he ever have to bring that up? You see, if I was going to tell you about Kevin Durant right now, I, I've got to tell you about Jesus. But here's the thing. If I've got to tell you about Jesus, I can't just, I, I've got to tell you more. You see, I've got, if I'm going to tell you about Jesus, <laughs> I've got to tell you about the cross. If Witness always. That's what we said last week, and, and we all get to witness always in, in every arena. Now, now you probably don't get interviewed after a great day of teaching, right, Mrs. Stortzum, and you, but you would probably say, yeah, it's all God, it's all Jesus. Uh, you don't get interviewed after a great day of being uh, an insurance uh, agent, right, JC? You wish you did, maybe. But you'd say it's all, and, and whatever your vocation is, you see, and, and in our lives, we would hope it would be said of us, if, if, if I was going to tell you about Pastor Countryman, i got to tell you about Jesus. But if I'm going to tell you about Jesus, i got to tell you about the cross. And as soon as I tell you about the cross, <laughs> that is where it gets really, really personal. Because if I'm going to tell you about Jesus and tell you about his cross, i got to tell you why he went to the cross and what happened on the cross. See, it, it, it becomes really, really personal. It, it, it becomes so personal because it, it, it's, he suffered for you. He, he died on the cross for your sins. He, he died on the cross for, for my sins. He, the righteous one, did not deserve to die the death that he died. He did it for you and me. And that gets really personal. You can't hide from that. And so at that point, you're either in or you're out. Either you say, oh man, he did. Or, or maybe you just say, you know what, that's all a myth. And some people get duped into this. See, even in the time of St. Paul, I said, well, to, to the Jews, it's a stumbling block. And to the Greeks, it is folly. It is foolishness. Why would you believe something so ridiculous? And I say, he died on the cross and suffered for you. It is really, really personal can't get away from it. And it is the law hitting home. So when we say we are people whose identity is found in the one to whom the Spirit and the water and the blood testify, we are people of Jesus Christ. We are people for whom He died. And it is our sin that put Him there. He bled for you and me. but we continue to preach Christ crucified. If I was going to tell you about your identity, and I started with Kevin Durant, and he says, you know, maybe he's living it out. If he's going to boast, he's going to boast in the Lord. But as soon as you get to the point of saying, I'm going to tell you about Jesus, I have to tell you about his crucifixion. I can't just leave him at being a, well, he was a great teacher, or he was quite a public speaker. No. I've got to tell you about the cross. And at that point that it gets so personal, it, it is through the eyes and ears of faith that either you say, yes, I repent, it was for me. And then it is through the eyes and ears of faith, it is a mouth that, that proclaims, and I can say to you, He was crucified for you. It gets so personal. He he took all of the sin that would, that would damn you to hell. He took the punishment that, that he served. He, he, his, his father says, he doesn't even know him at, at the cross. He says, uh, Father, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But he did it for you. See, those same words where I say, he died for you, for your sin. And the ears of faith here 
He died for your sin. Is, is there a difference there? Can you, does that make sense? This is okay, good, okay. It's so simple, it's the same words, but you see, if I'm going to tell you about someone who is in Christ, and then i got to tell you about Jesus, I've got to tell you about his cross. And the cross is the point that people are divided. And the world would say, this is foolishness, this is stupidity, this is death and defeat. But those who are in Christ, you know, those who are called by the Spirit, you and me, we say, yeah, it, it is death. It is a defeat, and yet at the same time, faith says this is life and victory for you and me. This is forgiveness that comes through his blood. And that is why we preach Christ crucified. That is why we witness always to this one truth. It is painfully simple. And whose pain is it? His pain. So when we say, or maybe when you're asked, so what is it about your life? You know, who are you? Well, I got to tell you about Jesus. And if I'm going to tell you about Jesus, I got to tell you why I have a hope, why we have a hope. It's because of this, this word of the cross. Sin, sin deserves death. St. Paul would say the wages of sin is death. And, and, and the crucifixion is that, that God suffered the punishment. You. The gift of God is this eternal life through Jesus. You didn't need to pay. But we witness always to that hope. Now, I'm glad to see here at, at 1030 that that uh, there are more people here. Eight o'clock, I don't know if it was weather or some of you were sleeping in because of other things. There were a lot of open seats, but there are still some open seats here. So I want you to tell people, you know, there, there's a spot for you here. There's a spot for you here, and when you come here, you're going to hear about Jesus. And, and when you come here, you're going to hear that he was crucified. For your sin, mine, you might be walking. And, and you're going to hear that, that on the third day he rose. You're going to hear that the spirit and the water and the blood, they testify. Because it's personal. still personal this morning. You'll hear Pastor Jacobson say the words that Jesus said. This is my body, this is my blood, given and shed for you. For you. Personal. Because it's Amen.